Some of the world's most exciting cars are exciting because they want you dead. Today, the top cars that want you dead, Matt Farah, you've driven a lot of them. I have, which is, it's a good thing I'm here today to talk yes. about it with this amazing new table. Cars that are more dangerous than heart disease. What? Let's see the list. Let's see the list. Our road testament. Road testament. Hey, welcome to Road Testament. Look who I have today. Matt, this guy. Matt Farah. This guy. Matt, this I guy. left my hair at home. Ah, I have some I could loan you for 50 bucks. Actually, that's not a loan. At Drive on Twitter and um, the Facebook thing, because uh, we asked this question on Facebook, the cars that are, that are out to get you, out to kill you. There are a few. There are and a few. Why isn't there no at the smoking tire, by the way? I'm a little offended there should be an uh, at the we'll smoking We'll put that, tire. That's your, they'll put that in your lower put third. Put that in my lower, th in this, yeah. this general area, okay? Yeah. Matt Farah. Now this list is not a in order of appearance list. This is a, uh, this is a random list. Yeah, this is a random list. You've driven a lot of these cars. Uh -huh. um, th the idea was that uh, there are some cars out there that are just dangerous as hell. Right. And I'll be um, honest, I didn't listen to anyone's suggestions on Facebook. Right. Some of these are more obvious than others. Some yeah. of them are sort of go down in history as, as the most dangerous cars. Some might be a little surprising even. Hopefully there'll be uh, some surprises in yes. there. So uh, let's get right down to the first one. Hennessy Venom. This Very is a car obvious. you just drove. Very obvious. Venom GT. Uh, 1,244 horsepower. Uh, 2,700 pounds. Twin turbo V8 um, in a Lotus. Yeah. And uh, this car has three settings for power. It's 800 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower, and 1,250 horsepower. But it's more like, you know, hospital morgue and <laughs> dental records are the three settings. There are so many ways to die in this car, whether uh, through sheer speed, um, exiting the road at, at uh, well into the triple digits, which right. is possible. And then there's, uh, on the Spider version that I drove, you know how people say you should never get in a roll cage car without a helmet? Yes. There's a roll cage in that car. Oh, there you go. So, so banging you your head against the roll bang cage. Banging your head against a... the roll cage, even though, you know, it's a suede wrapped roll cage. So it's oh, wow. sort of like getting, you know, beaten over the head with a Prada handbag. Or it's like, it's like playing football in 1920. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like playing football in 1920. Now, the car itself is yeah. fairly stable, actually, at speed. Um, it's fairly easy to drive, yeah. which is both a good and a bad thing. Because it's so easy to drive, um, it's also much easier to die. Right, and it doesn't have um, a lot of traction control and that kind of stuff. Or airbags. It have, and it doesn't it have no airbags. airbags. It has no airbags. Well, um, not that you, you know, at the, at, the, at the speed you'll be going when you leave the road, you're not going to need those the airbags. The airbag at that point would be like a, more like a catcher of pieces <laughs> than anything else. You need like a net to catch you, all the pieces. If you crash this thing, the seatbelt will literally saw you in half. <laughs> Like uh, like so, in Commando where he hurls that <laughs> rotary saw blade. So that's not to say that this is poorly built. No. It's no. just that it's... It's just so fast that you, you won't hit something at 20 or 30. You will hit something at 220 or 230. <laughs> 230. And then, at that point, there's nothing you can do. It's game over. Yeah, yeah. It's All game right. over. Um, so, uh, w by the way, watch Matt's, uh, Matt's drive piece on that. Yeah. Um, it's short, but that's because I was only allowed to drive it for... 30 miles. Right. The secret celebrity, uh, secret Steven mystery Tyler. celebrity. Yes. Back, uh, uh, they, they didn't, John didn't want to think he was uh, using Steven's name to promote the car, which he wasn't. Right. So he right. asked me to leave his name out of it. Hi, JF. Uh, hey, JF Musial's um, here. But yeah, it's obviously Steven Tyler's car, and it right. had, it literally had 150 miles on it when right. I drove it. So, you know. You kind of, you know, you, he, we live in the world. The world. The world has rules sometimes. Exactly. All right, so what's next, uh, Max? Oh, here's another car that you I drove, drove recently. This, yeah. The 2013 uh, Shelby GT500, 662 horsepower, 631 pounds of torque. So, by the way, this is a modern car, brand new car, produced by a large company who presumably employs lawyers, which is amazing. Right. Because so, what's the problem with this thing? Well, there's a couple problems with this thing. One is that this car is ludicrously overpowered for this chassis. Every uh, Mustang I've ever driven, from this to Super Snakes that has more than 550 horsepower gets progressively worse the more power you add. Uh, secondly, it has a live axle in it. And as good a job as they do at minimizing the live axle, if you are going fast through a corner and you hit a bump, it will take a hop on you. Mm -hmm. If you are not prepared for said hop, you will end up going off the road backwards. <laughs> right. uh, and third, 
Um, this car has some of the most inadequate brakes I have ever used in a fast car. This car, uh, they say they're Brembo's because um, they say Brembo on them, mm -hmm. but I don't believe it. I melted these brakes in about 15 minutes of hard driving. The rear brake caliper is a single piston caliper. And my test car had, was the track pack car. And you could literally, Jack Baruth from Truth About Cars said he completely fried the brakes in two laps in VIR. Right. And um, to sell a car with that much horsepower and uh, without enough brakes to rein it in, that car wanted me dead. <laughs> and I'm amazed that I, I gave it back in one piece. Being overpowered for the chassis is sort of a uh, running thread through the most dangerous cars in the world. Yeah, overpowered is usually a good way to get dead quick. Right. But taking down the horsepower is actually a good thing because the... Um, We've both talked about this in other places. Yeah. Where the uh, the Laguna Seca, the Boss version, Laguna the Seca Boss is the best Mustang is, you can buy. It is absolutely engine, the best one brake, buy. suspension, chassis are all kind of in harmony. Right. This is just a motor that drags around a piece of metal. <laughs> I mean, the motor is an animal in this yeah. car. I mean, it's just it's so ridiculously fast. Yeah. And in a straight line, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. But. Um, the rest of the car honestly cannot keep up to the motor. Right. Maybe and, next generation. And oh, furthermore, I was able to drift this car at Spring Mountain with all the driver's aids left on. Oh. So, so they, they do well, that's... pretty much nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what the GT500 absolutely wants so, you to So the nannies were, were all sleeping and uh, <laughs> sleeping with the gardener? Is that the nanny it, sleeping with the gardener? I would drift and it would make a funny noise, but it wouldn't like stop drifting. <laughs> like, it would, it would yeah, keep going. Matt, stop. <laughs> no, it would just go, ah, ah, but then, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> wants you dead. Yeah. GT500. Okay, what's next, Max? Oh, okay. All right. So Jag XJ220. This one was your call, actually. This was my call because, um, for for two reasons, the 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 concept car had a V12, yes. right? Uh, naturally aspirated V12. That's the first thing. The the later car had a a, a turbo six, and the thing that you guys said in um, a couple of you guys said in uh, on Facebook was that Group B cars are actually the most Notoriously dangerous cars Notoriously dangerous. Notoriously probably. dangerous. But we've left so, race cars off the list. There's yes, no we've race left cars race cars off yeah. the list. So it was the XJ220 that actually had a Group B engine. It had the Walkinshaw um, Max, one more. It had the engine out of the, uh, the, the MG, MG Metro. Yeah. Uh, this actually, if we would included race cars, this would probably be way crazier than right. the Because the XJ220 has aerodynamics and wheelbase. Exactly. You know. Well, yeah, except that turbo lag, <laughs> yeah. you know, for days. Go back, Matt, go back one. The irony of this car is if it actually had the V12 in it, it would still probably make the list just due to sheer risk of fire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? The cooling needs yeah. may not have been met uh, to, to the extent that it needed. But, you know, the crazy thing about this car is, that is it is hard to drive because of that and we're gonna. There will be. There are other cars. You're on this probably list old that enough that, that you've actually driven one of these. Uh, you driven an XJ220? Uh, yes, but not at speed. You kind of how, just moped around. How was it moping? Um, and it's not not a whole lot of fun. Like I think every I've other heard, supercar from 1991 was awful. Same thing. Like don't meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah, this awful. is the, this is yeah. Um, but at speed, apparently, it's better. Right. Um, so you have to go faster to get it to make it good. Exactly. Right. It's, it's almost like driving it, a downforce car, where like yeah. the faster you go, the safer it is. Right. But if you lose it, you're probably just dead. And you're probably just dead. Also, yeah. Also, yeah if you're in a corner and you get the turbo lag right. wrong, because this was really laggy. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that well, that's the Group B thing. Because yeah. when it does kick on, it's it's yeah. massive. Mid engine, tons of turbo lag. Yeah. Dead. Dead. Next. This is the Vector W8 twin turbo. This is one of the um, worst engineered, worst conceived supercars of all time. Right. It had uh, a 600 and change horsepower twin turbo 427 <laughs> in the back, transverse, um, mated to a three speed automatic transmission that had no sort of manual shifting controls whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and it also had a three across bench seat. Um, the and vector and, and it's uh, the problem is that it's ugly as hell. <laughs> it took the, it took them, what ten years to get this thing from yeah. prototype to production, right? Not so only is it not aged well, <laughs> I mean it didn't it, it, it didn't wasn't age well when it was new. Exactly, <laughs> it didn't age well from the time that they designed it <laughs> yeah. from the time that it actually came out because it yeah. was designed in the late seventies, 
And it actually really does have that late 70s look. Right. So eventually this might be really cool. In the way that a Bricklin, if you like the Bricklin, right? Yeah. Like that sort of. I would take a Vector over a Bricklin, I think. But <laughs> I don't know. See, and the other, the other bad thing about, you know, this car's most famous moment is in the movie Rising Sun, where it crashes <laughs> and into a giant fireball <laughs> and the guy dies. Think about product placement for a second. How bad was was Jerry Wiegert's product placement guy? And they said, we really want to use your car in this movie. And he goes, all right, no problem. We're going to make your car look great. It's going to be, all, it's going to be the, the, the bad guy's supercar. <laughs> it's going to crash and explode in three seconds. <laughs> like, Come on! <laughs> like, what the hell? All right. Yeah, these things are terrible. Yeah, terrible. Terrible and looking. And the, the, if you're inside, the dashboard very strongly resembles a wall. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> it's always so nice. You crash, you're just head oning a wall. Into a wall. Yeah. The the next uh, not the next picture, the next um, the next vector looked yeah. even worse. It was yeah. probably a little bit better. And it was a rebody Diablo. Like oh, right. there's a there's a very good reason people don't rebody Lamborghinis. You're basically taking the worst of this and the worst of a Lamborghini <laughs> and sticking them together into the worst possible right. car you can imagine. By the way, we're talking about the, the top 10, our top 10, the number 11 was the Diablo. Right? <laughs> it's like so the, one that, the one that got bumped was the Diablo. The Diablo. Yeah. So um, yeah, Vector, um, if, you, if you drive one of these things, your odds of death are astronomical. Right, right. But your odds of just everyday awesome. <laughs> Are, like, Your odds of owning a great set of pants, <laughs> really good with this car. Well, I mean, if you, if you, but it, like a, a person who drives around town in a Vector is going to get noticed now. Oh, Even yeah. though everybody's going to think you're driving a kit car. Yeah, right? nobody would believe that's an actual supercar that was retailing for four hundred thousand dollars at one point. Andre Agassi, right? So this is the Andre didn't Agassi have, story. Didn't he have this one? He ordered this, and it might even been this one. This is An the tennis player Andre Agassi, <laughs> right? You know. Made his, you know, when he was a kid, basically a kid tennis player. When he was player. Andre Agassi. When he was really Andre yeah. Agassi. Before he came back and was Andre Agassi When he was again. playing tennis, not hawking Rogaine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he kind of rushed them to finish his, yeah. right? Because it was like 40, 455 grand. Yeah. Um, and he wanted it. And they, they actually rushed it out. And they shipped it to him. Nothing and were like, like a rushed out <laughs> vector. <laughs> exactly. Nothing says that, reliability. And they said, they said, you know, here, you could show this, just don't drive it. What do you think his warranty was? Three years, 36 miles? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, we haven't actually finished it, so you can show people, yeah. but don't actually drive them around in it yet. Yeah. You know so, what really ruined this car? The U.S. market like Yeah, that's a shame. That, without <laughs> those, it right? would have been a killer car. Right, exactly. All right, Max, what's up? Oh, uh, here's a shout out to this, our U.K. friends. This is the obvious of obvious. Well, this is the most obvious. I mean, a car that was designed to flip over. Yeah. Like, to, uh, you know, they, they race these now, and people only watch the races in the, on the chance, which is every race, right. that a Just few like of them NASCAR. are going to flip over. Yeah. It's like NASCAR. It's like NASCAR if with you more You want to watch a racing series, for, and people get mad at me because I say that I watch racing for the crashes and that that's cold and, and not cool. Screw them. That's why I watch racing. <laughs> I, I want to see stuff break. I don't want to see one get hurt, but I well, want to see stuff. Well, and I would you, watch this series. You are the audience for uh, for, for Reliant, Reliant Robert Robert racing. racing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, that, that's a controlled venue, though. So you've got yeah. all of these cars that are similar going around in circles <laughs> and crashing like every other car crashes. But on the road, imagine driving this on the road. Like you, you just. Going around a, a country bend and I just mean, flip over into a tree. I mean, when I no watched the, the the Top Gear piece on this, which is possibly the funniest thing ever yes. put on television, right. even when he was going in a straight line and not rolling, it looked like he could genuinely roll at any <laughs> second, <laughs> just due to the the littlest. I mean, you could run over an ant and just. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dramatic tension of the Reliant Robin. Is yeah. that you at any moment you could just be on the roof. What's so amazing about these things is like that cars like the T-Rex and the Morgan three-wheeler, which are basically just this driving in reverse, <laughs> right. don't roll. And, True. and you know, it's, uh, it's amazing how if wrong were, they, could, they got this design. <laughs> if they had just turned the body around. <laughs> like, think of what they could have done. You could have a great lemons car by, by oh. yeah, see, now, now oh, we're talking, awesome. right? I love it, I love it, let's do that. Do you that. think you can get a Reliant Robin to pass tech in lemons? I don't think you should. 
Um, I don't think they would let you. You would take you'd be able to take a lot of bribes. <laughs> you take like a case of really expensive scotch. Yeah. All right, what's next? Oh yes, I know. Ariel Adam V8. It's uh, 500 horsepower. Uh, two, uh, two two liter, two and a half liter, two two point something liter. With the Hartley V8, or it's is it the two Yamaha yeah, liter the, bike engines right, stuck right. together? Yeah. So like two point. Uh, was it 2.6 something uh, like it's that? It's 2. Point something, but was it 1.3s? It's, I it's don't know. It's absurd. Yeah. It's basically I drove an Aerial Atom, the 300 horsepower version, and the absolute last thing that would ever occur to my mind when getting out of that car is 200 more horsepower <laughs> is absolutely necessary here. This this car, it's not so much about dying in it, it's as it is about getting ejected from it. <laughs> right. Because just by looking at that car, you could tell that you're not going to die in it. You're going to die 100 feet away from it over the wall you just hit. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, like, it's so I mean, this absurd. Is, this is not a car to toy with, right? So, and, yeah. and it's a toy, right? So, so it, what, It's a ladder you... with a V8 on it, <laughs> basically. A, a bent ladder with yeah. a V8. Um, by the way, an awesome car with 200 horsepower. An awesome car yeah. with 250. 300. I, I drove it, and it was it it was overpowered. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I mean, honestly, right. I mean, the, the power to weight ratio of this is like a horse dragging a pack of cigarettes. Right. right? I mean, it's like because you could also because not only could you get ejected from it. I mean, who knows what happens if you just hit something? What is that? Does that car s survive an accident at all? Uh. Or even if you hit the gas pedal hard enough, you can get sucked right into that thing. <laughs> There's a reason they put a little mesh cage <laughs> over this. If you remove that, your head is going into the intake right. all yeah. day long. It's like a food mill, maybe. <laughs> You just like end a, up like a wood chipper? It's a 500 horsepower chipper you, shredder. You end up as sauce. Yeah, it's like the end of Fargo. Yeah, we're, we're sorry, Mrs. Farah. He's, he's sauce now. Yeah, but I mean, and you could, I mean, all you have to do in this car is follow someone a little too closely and you're getting a rock to the face. Well, that's another problem. Yeah. You, you better be wearing a very good helmet. I mean, even, have you ever seen what the optional windshield looks like on one of these? Yeah, it's about it's the weird... size of a post-it note. And it goes right here, <laughs> exactly. and it does absolutely nothing. You will get, I mean, you get, I, when I drove one, I was getting rocks in my pant legs, <laughs> rocks in my face. I took a rock to the chest. This, this is the most dangerous <laughs> car you Where can, were you driving it? Through the, the Valley I of the Kings? Seattle. Like that? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Seattle. Such a crazy car, but at the same time... They were just time, throwing... People were just throwing rocks at you, I think. It was like... I think uh, they might have known I was Jewish. I think that was the problem. <laughs> Someone told them there was a Jew in town driving, driving a, a car, sports car with no top, and people were like, I've been waiting for this day my entire <laughs> life. Oh. I even got JF to laugh for <laughs> <with> that one. <laughs> JF was dying. <laughs> Max, oh my God. what's this next? This coffee's hot, I'm sweating. All right, this is an obvious one. First generation Dodge First Viper. First generation Dodge Viper. Worst engineered car to ever come out of a, a, a proper factory. I, all right, I might stop short of that. But second worst? <laughs> no, I mean, don't forget what they were making at the time. Like, I mean, you know. This, That's true. This car, okay, granted, it, um, it was made to go really fast. Yeah. Now, whether or not you could keep the uh, <laughs> the keep it out of the weeds, basically depended on your ability to manage all of that. Pretty stuff much. I mean, this had this car had uh, a a pretty flexible chassis. And flexible well, is a pretty kind term there. Um, I mean, honestly, look at this panel gap. Yeah, you can see this panel gap from here to that camera over the entire internet to your home screen <laughs> from 10 feet away, you can see that Wait, panel wait, that's gap. supposed to be there. That's, a, that's an intake. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, that's not an intake. This, no, this car is 450 horsepower, yeah. no traction control, no airbags, right. no safety features whatsoever. Um, the transmission tunnel could give you burns on your uh, right leg. This pipe will give you burns on your left leg. Yes. Uh, you'll get a sunburn on your head. Yeah. God forbid you're driving this thing and it rains, you might actually drown in there. Um, <laughs> there, there are a lot of good ways to die in a first in a generation, first generation life. Viper. I mean, and for a car that's so wide, right? I mean, what mm -hmm. were the tires on the back? 345s? 345s or 335s? So, like, even with that, I mean, even with all that rubber, yeah. it still couldn't save you. You, you. you almost can't keep these things straight. 
You know what I mean? You hit the gas and it just goes over a lane on its own. Right. And have you ever tried to drive one of the, I've tried to drive one of these cars with the side windows affixed. Oh. Okay. Remember these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This car did not have roll up glass windows. This car had north face tent windows. <laughs> and it was like <laughs> and it was like plastic and right. black canvas. And if you have to put those windows on, your odds of getting a, a broadsided from either side go up exponentially. Yeah, right. I mean, the, you know, and then they eventually they put a roof on it. And know, that made it a little and better. And that made it a little bit better because yeah. if you do if you do turn it over. I um, will say that the new Viper looks excellent. By the way, yes. The and they've, they've awesome. fixed all of these things. Yeah. Like yeah. the new Viper. We're talking 1992 yeah, this is, right, levels exactly. of Viper. This is, this is some Lee Iacocca, Carol Shelby, up late, doing... Get that goddamn thing out! Yeah, that's right. exactly. Yeah. yeah, this these this is the the mental age of law, the, the pinnacle of lawlessness yeah. when it came. This to was well, that was the thing. Is like they really this was a reactionary car. It was a car right. that like came out because of the, it was a reaction to this this constricting government inf right. interference for the past right. years. This is a Texas car. For this sure. is a Texas car. It yeah. is. All right, and it's uh, it, with, with very little regard to safety. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Max, what's up? Oh, Roof Yellowbird. How do you not love this car? First God, it's a, first of all, yeah. I mean, this is like, you know, if you if you were reading Road and Track in 1987, right? This is the end all and be all of. This was it. Of, and actually, you could even go so far as to call it a sleeper car because yeah. it's got the narrow body. Mm -hmm. It has the the standard Carrera wing. It it looks actually, with the exception of the front bumper, pretty much like a Carrera with different wheels on it. Right. And uh, this car was the fastest car in the world in 1987. I think it went 211 miles an hour. It was uh, 2,500 pounds and 469 horsepower. It's, it was absolutely insane. With, with, and this was before Porsche started moving their engines <laughs> inward. <laughs> right, it was still in the same place. This was, this was right. way out pendulum status. Right, it's one thing to go 200 in a, in a modern yeah. uh, GT2. Yeah. Uh, where the engine's actually up a little bit, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe not completely not, not hanging, but, but it's it's, yeah, getting, it's getting there. there. Yeah. This is this the I mean the in car Nurburgring lap oh with my this God. thing. I love that. What it's like you, what did you say about that? It's like he was he's sawing like there's so much it's like it's there's so much correction that it yeah. looks like he could start a fire in the He's going down column. the straightaway doing this <laughs> so it's to like, keep the car from ending up corrections. backwards into the armco. It's amazing how if just I mean if you watch that thing um, it's the, the amount of effort with and the guy. He's not wearing a helmet. Either, yeah. Right. <laughs> I think was he wearing gloves and no helmet? I think, I think he had gloves, gloves and no helmet. Yeah. Just the amount of effort that it took right. to keep this thing from just going completely this sideways. This is like a contemporary. You know, I did remember reading that someone suggested the 930 Turbo, which is also right. a car that wants you dead. Right. This is a 930 Turbo with 50% more power and 30% smaller rear tires. <laughs> <laughs> you know what That's I mean? Like, if that car wants you dead, yeah. this car has a loaded gun just waiting. Right. <laughs> just, just ready. Plus, rear visibility, I don't Ooh, think so. None, we yeah. have no rear visibility. And, um, you know, as well, no, no airbags, no safety features, right. nothing. Yeah. This is, this is a, a, a rolling death trap <laughs> of awesome. Certainly. Um, also, a throwback, but uh, a very awesome throwback. Uh, Brilliant car. They're worth a lot of money today. Yeah, sure. If you, could, I mean, if you can find one. There was one on Bring a Trailer not long ago. What? I think How it much? was about 150 grand. You know what? That's a good buy. That That's it's a pretty a, good buy because in 20 years, this is going to be yeah. a, a half a million dollar car. Yeah. Uh, Max? Oh, here's one. Any Kia. What's that? Any Kia from the year 2000. Okay. I, I have been in a number of 2000 model year Kias. And things will literally fall off this car at any time. I, I, I've been in scary cars that are fast, scary, slow, scary. So do you, but unlike the uh, old MGs, you, you don't have the bumper sticker that says the parts flying off this car <laughs> of the finest British quality. <laughs> no. This is either the finest this Korean. Is, this is the low, Korean the quality. lowest of Korean. Anything. This is yeah. This is before Hyundai and Kia became the juggernauts right. that they are now. Um, and by the way, I love those rims. Those are like. Porsche 914. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, like, I forgot what those are called. That's the only Porsche thing about this car. <laughs> exactly. This car, I, I had a girlfriend that had this exact car, and it was the single most unsafe feeling car I have yeah. ever been in. It, you hit a pothole, and I swear the, the, the suspension punched right through the fender. <laughs> uh, it, it drank about 
a quart of automatic transmission fluid a day. Well, that's and a shame. Uh, it, it was it was really really bad. Um, Rio means river, and that's probably where it's the should river be. of automatic <laughs> transmission fluid flowing from that thing. <laughs> it, exactly. le it leaves a Rio of fluids behind every time you get in that car. Yeah. All right. So before you wait, Max, don't don't. I'm gonna. This is dramatic tension here. Dramatic this tension. This is a car that you. The next car is a car that you owned. Oh yeah. Is that are we at, are we at the the final I scary think. car? I hope we are. Max, are we at the final scary car. Yeah, yeah, this go was, for it. This is my, uh, along with uh, Drive Zone Larry Casilla, we yes. shared this car. We mm -hmm. bought it together. 65 Shelby Cobra. Now, any Cobra. 65 Shelby Cobra. Well, 2,065 right. Shelby <laughs> exactly. Cobra. Just to, yeah. you know, not to. Now, you know. Any Shelby Cobra will be properly scary. Have you driven a Cobra? Yes, but um, it was properly scary. It was properly scary, yes, it right? Was. It was. That, that is a car that, if you don't know what you're doing, wants you, you know, wants you dead. I mean, Bob Bondurant, the fact that that guy won Le Mans in a Cobra. That's the thing. Like, those guys. Alan McNish, awesome. Right. But look what he's driving. Right. Bob Bondurant won Le Mans in a Shelby friggin' Cobra. That, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really. And if you saw, like, like just looking at the old... Uh, the old uh, footage of those yeah. cars. It's really amazing. They're like mental. They're, they're, they're like sideways. The and whole it, time. And just constantly at the limit. Yeah. And this thing. So um, when I bought a Cobra, I was very young. And, uh, and a 427 Cobra just wasn't enough. It wasn't, it wasn't enough. So this uh, particular one um, had a NASCAR engine in it. Uh, along with a Jericho four-speed uh, crash box transmission. Um, it had no speedometer, uh, no fuel gauge, no odometer, no blinkers, no windshield wipers, and an eight-gallon fuel cell. Okay. Uh, and an exposed uh, roll bar uh, that was right next Which to your Which Larry's head. driving with no helmet. With no helmet, yeah. And I, used, I would also drive with no helmet. And this car By would the way, a, yeah, if you, you know, if your head goes back, what does it go into? By the way, steel. Just, uh, just, just plain tubular, steel. tubular steel. Okay. Just, just checking. And um, that actually happened to me a few times. I bumped myself on the head by accelerating too hard. You could literally knock yourself you out. You could literally knock yourself out by launching this car. Yeah. Um, okay. And it weighed uh, 2,200 pounds and made 610 wheel horsepower. Um, and I drove this car a total of 10 times before I sold it because I was 100% certain that if I drove it an 11th time, I would die in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Um, I mean, you're you're just insane anyway. But like, I mean, like, look at those. What did you do? Did you do anything else to the suspension? When was it, it was, like a yeah, straight it was on up coilovers? It was pretty low. Um, it was actually even lower when we bought it. We had to raise it because it kept rubbing. Uh, but that car was the single most terrifying car I have ever driven in my life. Max, w just just here's that the, was my license. Here's the license plate. plate yeah. It says "Make you poo," <laughs> and that's what you can make people do. Um, with frequently, uh, frequently. Yeah, with, that didn't make any with sense. Frequently? But with frequently, no, but but you, did, kept, you kept them regular <laughs> in this car. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? That New York State <coughs> lets you have that because technically it's makeup zero make zero. Up, oh, oh they must zero. They must yeah, have yeah. thought I was uh, working for Mary Kay or something. <laughs> makeup zero Is zero. Makeup zero zero available. <laughs> make you poo. And uh, that that car absolutely would you you would you would deuce right in your pants <laughs> in that car. Yep. And uh, and we did many many times over. And oh by the way, and that's fantastic. This, to know. this uh, uh, index card size mirror yeah. uh, is the only rear view mirror, and it looks directly at this roll bar. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have zero rear visibility yeah. in this car. No, you have that camera up on top. That's, that's yeah. for uh, that's yeah, for, that's for hijinks. So later you could see what was behind you. Yeah, so you could see um, what you were running away from before you rear-ended the 1992 Dodge wow. Viper and we right in front of it in that picture. Look at that. Yeah. Scary cars, right scary there. Scary cars. Probably the most scary cars ever uh, ever built. Uh, you guys have your own. Let us know in the comments below and on Facebook and on at Drive on Twitter. Matt Farah, thanks for coming in. As, as always. As I drool coffee on myself. That's fantastic. It's all right, man. Don't worry about it. Cannibal coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Driveshirts.com. And drivepits.com. Oh, drivepits.com. Drivepits.com. Uh, these com. lights are hot. I'm drinking coffee. I'm shit. Ridiculous. Shitting. Next time I'm wearing a I'm wearing a shirt with um with like like big man boobs on them. I don't know what am, what am I saying? I'm shitting like a yentl at a stride. You're, you're gonna concert. have cut this by the time. Yeah. 